Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Samia, and I am part of the social media team here at UNESCO. Today, we are having a live interview with Christopher Wiley, who just came out of his panel uh, in the context of the Internet for Trust conference. So we're super excited to have him. Christopher, hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So for the viewers who don't know who you are, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. So my name is Chris. Um, I'm a data scientist, um, but uh, probably better known as the Cambridge Analytica whistleblower, um, where I revealed um, uh, how data can be misused, particularly in the context of elections on social media platforms. Um, that resulted in uh, the largest fine in history for a publicly traded tech company, $5 billion uh, to Facebook. Um, and now I spend my time um, working as an activist, talking about um, human rights and how that interfaces with AI and technology. Well, we're very excited to have you for a few minutes here to answer these questions. So let's get right in it, uh, right into it. So you raised a very interesting point during the uh, during your panel. You asked, you know, why is it that there are more safety regulations for a toaster or a fridge than there are for social media platforms? Could you elaborate a little on that? Sure. So I think sometimes um, we forget that we already regulate technology pretty much everywhere, right? You know, your car is technology. The medicine that you take is technology. Um, you know, the airplane that you use to travel is technology. And when we, when we look at history of technological disruption in previous generations, you tend to get a, a, a fact pattern where a new technology is developed. Like there was no uh, FAA rules for airplanes before airplanes were invented, right? Mm -hmm. So most technology by its nature comes into an unregulated space uh, if it's new. And what tends to happen is over time, problems emerge in that technology, whether it was airplanes falling out of the sky, um, you know, or drugs, um, you know, poisoning people unintentionally, where the public starts to demand that government steps in and sets ground rules for, for usually safety. Um, and I think in sort of the journey of digital technology, we're now at that point where there is a public consciousness around the problem of data misuse, the problem of algorithmic harms. Um, and we're now just starting to talk about uh, solutions to those problems. I think one of the difficulties though, is that technical people, engineers, people like me tend to not be part of that conversation. And so when you look at the focus of those, those, those debates, they tend to be around you know, things like transparency or privacy or user rights, rather than around the actual design of these systems themselves, the setting standards, technical standards for engineering. You know, platforms like Facebook, the, the top uh, job title in that, in that company is engineer and architect, right? But we don't regulate the engineering or the architecture, and we're not really talking about regulating the engineering and the architecture. Yeah. You know, if you imagine, and, and I, think, I think one of the, the problems is that Silicon Valley has this really bad habit of calling everything a service. Right, you know, software as a service, anything as a service, and you know, I could say like the flat that I live in in London, I could call that a shelter as a service, right? Where it's no longer a building, it's a service, and I am no longer a tenant; I'm a user. I don't have a lease; I have a subscription package. Mm. And imagine if we regulated buildings just on the basis of services, right? What happens to the fire exits? What happens to the wiring? Right? What happens to the air flows? Yeah, Is this building point. safe? Is it earthquake proof? Right, you know, is this, and so I think one of the problems is that we we kind of we jump to a certain set of issues and forget that there is a common source for many of these problems, which is engineering. Because at the end of the day, these are engineered products; these are products of people. For me, that's actually what makes uh, the issue actually hopeful, because we're dealing with person-made problems. Right, engineers are people. Um, they make design, de design decisions. These are constructions. And that means that you know, if we started to take a more design-oriented approach, an engineering-oriented approach to these, these issues, that we would be encouraging the people who actually make these products to think about the functioning and the effects of their products on wider society as they're making them at the design stage. Um, my view is that we should be focusing on prevention 
rather than mitigation. So on the panel, when we were talking uh, about content moderation, to me, it's, it's a symptom of a wider problem. And that if you, if you need to talk about content moderation, um, it means you haven't solved an underlying issue, right? My view is that we should try to prevent these problems from emerging, whether it's you know, amplified hate speech or disinformation or whatever, by looking at the behaviors of the AI itself and then asking engineers to check their work prior to releasing things into the public to make sure that they're safe in the same way that we require other technical industries to check that their products are safe before releasing them into the public. Sounds pretty logical, yeah, I would say. Um, and so what are your thoughts actually on the current state of social media platform regulations? Um, I, I, you know, the, it's a start. I think, um, you know, when I, when I came forward as a whistleblower in 2018, words like disinformation were not mm. common. Right. Um, I remember actually explaining what this was to people at the time. Um, you know, data protection and privacy; these were not considered, you know, mainstream political issues. Um, and there's been, you know, a huge uh, shift in awareness and articulation of the problem, um, which is a step forward. Um, you know, in the past five years, there's been, you know, the fact that we're sitting at UNESCO talking about you know, safety and trust and all of that on the internet, I think really shows that the, the public has been on a journey for the past five years. Um, the, the problem, like I was saying before, is that uh, you know, we are focusing on symptoms rather than causes. Um, and I think that's in part because you know, engineers tend to not be part of that conversation. Yeah. Um, and, and there's something weird that we do with digital platforms when we're talking about it. We sort of expect that lay people, people who are not technical, you know, members of Congress or, you know, MEPs in the EU, whomever, um, should be the ones figuring out this problem. And imagine if we regulated airline safety through debates at a legislature, right, where members of Congress debate the shape of an air wing. Mm -hmm. and, and to solve the problem of a plane yeah. falling out of They're the sky. They're not the best uh, candidates They're to... Not. Yeah. And, and so the reason why we have technical agencies that regulate technical products, whether you know, the FAA or you know, FDA or whatever in the United States looking at aerospace or medicine or cars or whatever, is because you know, we, the, the public forums like a legislature are not the best place to figure out sometimes highly technical problems. Um, and what we do typically as society is empower a technically competent regulator with powers of investigation, of approvals, of certification, who set standards, who hire engineers to write those standards and then talk to engineers to implement those standards. Mm -hmm. Um, where you have an engineer-to-engineer -engineer interface with industry, where that, that regulator is empowered with you know, protecting the public, but protecting the public with expertise. And uh, you know, for me, I think, although it's absolutely fantastic that there are uh, public fora like this in terms of talking about the, the issues, I don't think that we will really get to actionable solutions on these problems until we start to think about why is it that we don't have regulators for digital products that are that are empowered with inspection that are empowered with certification that are empowered to set standards that that where industry is required to interface with mm -hmm. those regulators in the same essentially normalizing the situation for digital platforms and making it you know equivalent to other technical te technical products that we already regulate Okay. So actually, the, you kind of started answering the, the question, but so what would be the most pressing, pressing issues that need to be addressed when it comes to social media regulations? Um, the behavior of algorithms. I, I think um, that we are just at the, the, the precipice of mass integration of AI into every facet of our lives, mm -hmm. right? So imagine... Um, you know, five, ten years from now, where you go home, you sit down, and you turn on the TV, and you start watching TV as the TV is watching you, 
and the TV is having a conversation with the other appliances in your home, which are also watching you and monitoring your behavior, yeah. right? Where your car is talking to your fridge and is talking to the TV and is talking to your computer and is talking to your workplace, and there's a conversation around you, a cacophony of information around you, but you can't hear or see. Mm -hmm. You're sitting in a silent room, but there is conversations happening around you about what should I show you and not show you to make you a better customer, mm -hmm. right? Where you are deprived of basic agency because choices are made for you without your involvement. Yeah. And what does that do to a society? What does that do to a culture? What does that do to our personal growth? What does that do to social cohesion? All of these, the, 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 you know, the, these are issues that all at the end of the day are about the behavior of AI. And what are the ground rules for how an algorithm can or cannot behave in relation to you and what rights do you have to exert against that piece of technology? And so if I was to say, what is the, the yeah, what's the most fundamental thing that we should be looking at is what are the ground rules for algorithmic behavior? Um, because this is like, this is coming and if we, if we don't set any ground rules, we are undertaking a massive experiment on society where we don't quite know what the consequences are. That's a really scary thought, actually. Um, so the, one of the last questions then would be, you know, some have argued that too much or increased regulation of social media platforms could stifle uh, free speech and human rights. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. Well, I'm speaking to you as somebody who's banned on Facebook and Instagram uh, for being a whistleblower, for reporting them to the authorities. And the first thing that they did uh, when I reported wrongdoing was to ban me. Okay, So the first thing that I'd say is that already happens. My speech was limited intentionally by these platforms mm -hmm. because of what I did. Um, the other thing that I would say is that when you're looking at platforms, it's sometimes easy to forget that what you see on a timeline is a product of active choices by AI in the back end, right? We are no longer in the internet of 1995, where when you go onto a forum, you just see in a chronological order what people have posted, and it's up to you to search through it. Now you see the, the byproduct of editing from a piece of AI. That means that platforms themselves are speech actors, right? They are deciding what speech is privileged and what speech is penal penalized. Um, and so if the question around regulation in terms of, you know, and, and if there's concerns around free speech, my, my question to those people is, well, when, a comp when private corporations are in charge of your speech, you have no rights, you have no recourse to the decisions that they make. Look at how Twitter is being managed right now on the whims of a billionaire, right? And so I do not think that our digital public forums um, should be managed on the whims of executives, of founders, of shareholders. They are affected with public interest. I really see these platforms more as utilities than anything else. And when you look at utilities, you know, your electric company or you know, your water company or roads, railways, et cetera, even though there may be private companies and they're allowed to make a profit, there are ground rules on how they interface with the public and what rights, what fundamental rights they have to respect regardless of profit. And so I would say that regulation can be done in a way that promotes free speech um, and, and done in a way that makes platforms accountable to the questions of free speech that they're engaging every day, accountable to people who are charged with the public interest, right? Rather than shareholders or a founder. Um, and so in that sense, I think that regulation can be done to promote these values and promote these rights. Okay, thank you very much. This was really enlightening. Thank you. Um, so thank you to all the viewers as well. Please make sure to stay tuned and uh, you can follow, our, uh, follow all the panels of the Internet for Trust conference on our, on our webpage. So stay tuned for more.